1938 is a watershed in the history of science fiction. Perhaps the most important after 1926, when magazine science fiction first began with Gernsback's Amazing. John W. Campbell, Jr. became editor of Astounding Stories in 1937. Prior to 1938, those who wrote science fiction were primarily pulp writers in their orientation. This perhaps sounds uncomplimentary, but it isn't meant to be. There were a group of writers who wrote for what were then called the pulp magazines, which published specialty literature of all sorts, westerns, romances, uh, detective stories, jungle stories, adventure stories, sea stories, war stories. And they paid very little. In order to make a decent living, someone who wrote these stories had to write a great many of them. And the only way you could write a great many was to write in many categories. And some of them wrote science fiction as well. As a result, science fiction was heavily adventure flavored. Uh, the writers did not necessarily know much science outside of that which they read in the Sunday supplements. Campbell changed all that. Campbell himself had gone to MIT, Duke University, had majored in physics, and had uh, the engineering attitude. And what he wanted were people who would write stories in which the science was realistic. Not realistic in the sense that they couldn't go out into the blue yonder. Not realistic in the sense that they couldn't extrapolate wildly. But realistic in the sense that people who worked with science resembled people who actually worked with science that scientists acted the way scientists do, that engineers acted the way engineers do, and in short, that the scientific culture be represented accurately. What Campbell had done was to create a science fictional world that was very largely a consensus. Not everybody wrote in the Campbell background, those who didn't, didn't always write, but the most remarkable stories of the period did create a world of computers, of trips to outer space, of missiles, of a science-important culture. To those of us who remember the Golden Age, we are now living in a science fictional world, and one which Campbell's science fiction did significantly succeed in creating. The science fiction magazines not only served as a source of science fiction, but also as a proving ground for science fiction writers. A magazine that comes out every month and has to have four or five short stories in every issue offers an unexampled opportunity for the uh, for the writing amateur to practice on and eventually make his mark.